Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm going to show you how to disinfect clay pots. Now unlike plastic pots, clay pots are a little harder to disinfect, but not impossible. The good thing is you can actually reuse clay pots if you sterilize them properly. And this is a really important thing to do in between plants. So if you had a plant in this type of pot and you want to reuse it with a different type of plant, particularly if you know you had some issues and some disease in your collection of plants, you really, really should disinfect and sterilize your pots before reusing them. So I have here three clay pots. As you can see, they're kind of dirty. We need to clean them up, disinfect them, and I'll show you how to go about it. So as you can see, my clay pots do have some deposits, some algae, some soil deposits. It's a really good idea to clean them up before you start sterilizing them because they can harbor bacteria, fungi, virus, and all of those pathogens, and they reduce the chance of a proper sterilization. So I'm going to go to the sink. I'm going to scrub all of these deposits off. So what I will be using is a normal sponge. Now this sponge I don't use for a lot of things. I only use this sponge to remove the deposits on my clay pots. I don't reuse it with anything else, although I sterilize it. So we're gonna start by wetting the pots and I'm gonna use the abrasive side of the sponge and just give this pot a really good scrub. And it's as easy as that. You can see my clay pot is free of those algae deposits and soil deposits. It is now ready to be sterilized. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other pots. So my clay pots actually turned out pretty well because they didn't have a lot of soil deposits. But after prolonged use, you can actually have some very hard to remove soil deposits. In this case, what you can do after scrubbing whatever you can is actually soak the pots in vinegar. This will dissolve the deposits and will make it a lot easier for you to scrape them off. Also, some people suggest that you use a metal scraper. I don't like it so much because it does scratch the pot itself. And even though I don't have major soil deposits, I do seem to have a little bit of soil deposit on this pot. So I'm just gonna try to remove it with vinegar. I'm not gonna soak it because there's no need, but let's see what vinegar does. So I'll just pour some vinegar on my sponge here and go ahead and try to scrape these deposits off. So as you can see, the vinegar did do a pretty decent job. If you want better results, of course, soaking it in vinegar is a different story, but right now I'm happy with the result and my pots are now ready to be disinfected. Before we go ahead and do that though, I want to mention that you will find articles who suggest vinegar is a good disinfectant and that you can disinfect your pots with vinegar, which is wrong. Vinegar is really not a good disinfectant. Vinegar is an acid and it works perfect at dissolving soil deposits, but it does not disinfect. Disinfect. And with that said, let's commence the disinfection. Okay, so the next step is to actually soak these pots in a bleach solution. A 10% solution or 9 parts water, 1 part bleach should be enough to disinfect these pots very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak them in a bucket. I have a bucket here with 5 liters of water already and I'm gonna add 500 milliliters of pure bleach that you can easily find at the supermarket or grocery shop. When using bleach it's a good idea to always wear gloves because bleach can actually damage your skin. And this bleach is really concentrated. You don't want any drop on your skin. Oops, so I'm just gonna pour 500 milliliters of bleach into this bottle. I'm actually using the bottle as a measurement. And then I'm gonna pour it into the bucket. Be careful with the drops. Maintain distance because you don't want bleach in your eyes and on your face and all of that. Just be careful with bleach. And I actually just opened the windows. It's a good idea to work in a ventilated room. So what I'm gonna do now is simply place my pots inside the bucket one by one so I don't have air gaps in between them. I place them one on top of each other so they can interconnect and I'm gonna make sure that the level of this liquid is above the rim of my pots. Now I'm gonna let these pots sit in the bleach solution for about an hour. The problem with the bleach is that it evaporates and after an hour or two is really not as strong. So every time you want to disinfect a brand new batch, if you are over one hour, you need to prepare a fresh solution. When I disinfect my pots, I usually go on my terrace because it is very ventilated and bleach smells kind of bad. So my pots stay in this bucket for about an hour or so and afterwards I actually get a second bucket that I fill with water. I get the pots and I rinse them once under the faucet and then I place them in the bucket with water to soak up that water and actually rinse very well. I let them stay in that bucket for about half an hour and then I change the water and add fresh water to make sure that I rinse all that chlorine very very well. 
After changing the water in the bucket three times, I actually place the disinfected pots in the sunshine and I leave them in the sun for about two days. And by doing this, I make sure that every bit of chlorine that I might have in the pores of the pots evaporates. And what I do to test if the chlorine is actually evaporated is I get a pot, wet it and then smell it. If it smells like chlorine, it needs more rinsing. But so far, I did not detect any chlorine traces in my pots. And I also use some of them. There has been no bad effect on the roots of my orchids, so I know that the chlorine is completely washed off, evaporated, there are no traces in my pots, and I am safe to use them. And that is how I sterilize and reuse my clay pots. Now there are a few more different ways of sterilizing them that people use. I'm gonna mention them and tell you what my problem is with them. So first of all, boiling the pots. I'm afraid that my pots will absolutely crack if I boil them. These are commercial, very cheap and not so good quality pots. And with some of them, I already see very fine cracks and if I would put them through boiling all that vibration will just enlarge in the crack and I risk destroying them also some people use ovens and sterilize clay pots through very high temperatures again I'm not sure how my cheap commercial pots will handle those temperatures and I just don't want to risk it because as they are right now they're not falling apart but I'm not sure what's gonna happen if I oven them also some people use the microwave and the microwave is actually a very popular technique of disinfecting medium and pots and all of that of course, pots that are not plastic or metallic. The problem with the microwave is that it's limited. The wavelengths only act in certain locations. Now, in case you didn't know, ants can actually survive microwaving, whether it's because they're very tiny and they can find a safe space or they have other adaptations, I'm not sure. But if ants can survive microwaving, there might be other stuff that can survive it. I might be totally off on this one, but I just don't feel safe disinfecting stuff in the microwave. Also, I saw people just pouring some boiled water on these pots. Again, this is not efficient because these pots actually cool very, very fast. And even if the water is boiling, the moment it touches the clay pot, it dramatically cools. It might feel hot to the touch, but it will have a temperature that will certainly not kill bacteria fungi and virus and I just don't consider it a thorough sterilization method. So for all these reasons bleach is optimum for me and the other methods I'm a bit wary about. Doesn't mean they're not good, I just don't like them. Now let's talk a little bit about bleach as I was telling you it is a corrosive substance. Wear gloves when you're handling it and also very important do not mix it with other cleaning products particularly the ones containing ammonia because the chemical reaction between bleach and ammonia leads to very harmful and toxic chloramine fumes. So just use water and chlorine. Also, chlorine is more efficient if you dilute it in water rather than just using it as it is. And of course, if you choose to use this method, be in a well-ventilated room. If you can do this outside, all the more better. And that's about it and I hope this was useful for you. Now about the medium, I do not disinfect it in bleach. I boil it. It handles boiling very very well I didn't have any crumbling or anything I had a little bit of dust that's to be expected though and it wasn't all that much and I didn't have cracked ceramics pieces that's okay I would just not boil clay pots so alrighty guys hope this video was useful to you let me know down below if you have other methods of sterilizing clay pots I would love to hear them also PS I know I am slacking on comments but it's actually a mixture of things starting with my laptop broke and I'm actually waiting for a certain component to arrive and I'm I'm not sure if it's gonna arrive before Christmas. Also, my working PC is in a room that I cannot access all the time. It's really complicated, but I'll do my best on my phone. It doesn't work that great when I need to share links, but yeah, I'll catch up with the comments. I'm sorry about that, but I do read your comments, so leave me your thoughts down below if you wanna share something with me. And with that said, thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to watch more videos from me, just subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And also I would appreciate it if you would rate this video with a like if you've enjoyed it and a dislike if you didn't enjoy it. So I'll just see you guys next time. Bye! So I'm actually using a different lens today and the good thing about it is that I can film quite well in low light conditions. Bad thing about it is it doesn't have image stabilization and also it cannot zoom in. I can just control the focus. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna use it in low light and I'm gonna use the other one when I move around and add a better lens to my Christmas wish list.